Okay, so at this point, on the other side of the, of the break, with the first part of the video, we were dealing with up until question 3.2. No? I think it's 3.2. No? 3.3.2. Okay, so who's checking for us? Are you on the right track? Okay. So in his twenty, is that correct? Yes. Alright. So in his twenty, so we wrote it in sigma notation. In 3.3.3, .3, the question says, calculate the sum of the series. Let's calculate the sum of the series. Okay, so that is the, the, the first three terms of the series. So 3.3.3, .3. so the sum of the series is equal to n over 2 into 2a plus n minus 1. Okay. And how many terms did we say there are? 20. So it's going to be 20 over 2 into 2. What's my A value? 6. Plus N minus 1 times D, which is negative 4. Okay, the paper can be found, or the link to the paper can be found in the description box below. Okay. Let's check your calculators on there. Yes. So we have 20 over 2 into... 2 times 6 plus n minus 1, which is 20 minus 1, which is 19 if you want it. To have written 19 would have also been fine times negative 4. The answer is negative 604. Is that correct? Negative 604. Alright, in 3.3.4, however, we are told that a quadratic pattern has the following properties. Oh no, this is not dependent on that. Okay, if I knew this was not dependent, I would have stopped at this point before in the previous video. Okay, I thought this was part of it. Okay, 3.4 we are told the quadratic number pattern. So what is exclusive to quadratic patterns? There is a second common difference. Not so. So it has term 1 is equal to term 5, which is equal to 24. A constant second difference of 4. So if I look at this here, term 1 is 24, term 2, 3, 4, and 5 is 24. And 20, yeah, 20. So whatever that is, the second difference is going to be. Okay. Determine the nth term of the spectrum. Right. So, people, what do we normally write here on the side? 2a. 3a plus b. Then, a plus b plus c. Not so. On the bottom up. So, at this point, what can you calculate already? We can calculate a. So, a is equal, 2a is equal to 4, so a is equal to 2. Remember, the quadratic pattern is tn is equal to a n squared plus b n plus c. Not so. So we got the A value now. Now we can say that A, which is 2, I'm going with this. Now, we can say 2 plus B plus C is equal to 24. So B is equal to 22 minus C. This equation, 1. Okay. All okay with that. Now, of course, it's two unknowns. How many equations do we still need? We need one more equation, not so. And this is term 5. That's T5. Alright. So, taking that in mind, we go with term 5. With, with that information, we say T5 is equal to. So, if I see an inhabitant, 5. And what is A? A is 2. So it's going to be 2 times 5 squared plus b times 5 plus c. And what is term 5 equal to? Term 5 is equal to 24. So 25 squared, uh, 5 squared is 25 times 2 is 50. 
We take that over, it becomes 5b plus c is equal to negative 26. That's equation 2. Okay. You guys understand? So what do we do now? Now we substitute equation 1, which is b equals 20, uh, 22 minus c, into equation 2. So now what's the equation I'm going to read? 5 into 22 minus c plus c is equal to negative 26. Okay? So now it's just a matter of solving for c. So that's 110 minus 5c plus c equals negative 26. Okay? Alright, um, that's going to give you negative 4c, now we put on the calculator negative 26, Oops. negative 26 minus 110, it's going to give us negative 136, negative 136 divided by negative 4, divided by negative 4 gives us 34. So C is 34. So what do we still need to solve for? B. So what do I do with that? Substitute that back into equation 1. Now I know some of you would write substitute in equation of all of those things. No? The same as is what we have here. So now we say B is equal to 22 minus 34. That's 22 minus 34, negative 12. <laughs> okay. So there we got our B, we got our C, and we got our A. But what's the question? Determine the nth term of the pattern. So, we can conclude therefore, T n is equal to A, which is 2 n squared, B, which is negative 12 n, plus C, which is 34. Correct, and you can test it. You can put it wherever you see an inner five, then you should get an answer of um, 24. Or wherever you see a you put, uh, in, you put a one. Normally, I don't go with one because okay, in this case, I didn't need, yeah, I did use one as well. Okay, so um, yeah. People, this is question four. You are given f of x equal to x squared minus nine and g of x equal to x minus three. What type of graph is f of x? The parabolic graph, not so. And then uh, the g of x equal to x minus three? The straight line graph. Question 4.1 says calculate the coordinates of the point of intersection of f and g. People, how do you calculate points of intersection? So the two graphs equal to each other, not so. So you say x squared minus 9 is equal to x minus 3. Bring everything to one side, x squared minus x, minus 9 plus 3 is positive, no, negative, 6. Okay, equals 0. It's a trinomial here, not so. So you got x and x, 3 and 2, minus plus. So x is equal to 3 or x equal to minus 2. People, why is there two x values? The two points of intersection, not so. There are two points of intersection. So you can either substitute this into g of x or f of x. I'm lazy, so I go to the easier one. So 3 minus 3 is 0. So the first point is 3 and 0. Substitute minus 2 in here. It's g of minus 2, of course. It's going to be minus 2 minus 3 is minus 5. Negative 2 and negative 5. So those are the two points of intersection. Okay. So I'm going to write here on the side. The equations was f of x equals x squared minus 9, whilst g of x is equal to x minus. Okay. You all with me there? Yes. You understand? Yes, sir. yes nice. Just stay with us, no? Don't let me know. Right, the next question says sketch the graph. Alright, sketch the graph. Of f and g and the same sy uh, sy uh, system of axes. <laughs> okay, 
And the same set of axes indicate the intercepts with the, with the axis and the point of the points of intersection. So the first graph is f of x equals, so when you work out the x-intercept, let y equal to 0. Not so. So you've got 0 here, it's going to be uh, x squared minus 9 is equal to 3, so x is plus minus 3. So there's plus 3 and minus 3, okay? Approximately there, no? going with the inner one. Then, minus 9 on your y. So you've got connected dots. Okay, I actually went through the other one. But anyway. That is the graph of f of x. You all okay with that, people? Yes. Right. So the g of x graph is a straight line cutting your x, your, 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 your y intercept at negative 3 and your x at uh, positive 3. So again, we draw the graph going through those points. And if you look at the points of intersection, you see the 3 and 0 is this point here, while it's negative 2 and negative 5 is that point there. <coughs> Okay, and this is the graph of g of x. Sorry, any confusion there so far? No. Now I know you guys haven't done the inverse functions yet, okay, and this is the next question. So, for this section, which is taught in grade 12, which is inverse functions, you still need to know your grade uh, 11 and uh, your lower grades uh, rules of functions. Okay, it still applies. So it says, write down the inverse of if in the form y is equal to whatever the. So what do we do for the inverse function? As you guys don't know, but I'll do it anyway for the video purposes. For the inverse function, what we do, we interchange x and y. So the equation of f of x is equal to x squared minus 9. So what do we do for the inverse function? As I said, we interchange x and y. Remembering that is a y. So x is equal to y squared minus 9. So we need to make y the subject of the formula. So we take 9 over the equal sign. So y squared is equal to x plus 9. To get rid of the square, square root both sides, not forgetting plus minus. So y is equal to plus minus the square root of x plus 9. And this is the inverse of f. Okay. 4.3. 4.4 Okay Four point four. So what I'm going to do is that All I need for 4.4 Is the equation of that inverse function so that they can use that space there. So if the inverse function of f is plus minus the square root of x plus 9. It's actually not a function, it's a relation because it does not pass the vertical line. Okay. But more about that once we get there. 4.4 says, sketch the graph of the inverse on the same set of axes as 4.2. So as, we, as I indicated that the inverse function is the reflection of the f graph in the line y is equal to x. So that's why we're changing x and y. So if you take uh, minus 3 and 3 into account, it's going to become minus 3 and 3. Because that is negative 3 and 0. It becomes 0 and negative 3. And this is 3 and 0. Not so? It becomes 0 and 3, which is that point. This is 0 and minus 9 becomes? Becomes what? Minus 9 and 0. Say it, what do you show you? Show you for another year? Huh? Uh, what's your name again? Sirat. Okay. Oops. Okay, now my, my graph is not drawn to scale. Can you see that? That's why it doesn't look so, so good. But this is your? The inverse function. So if I must draw the line y is equal to x going through this graph, then this is what it's going to look like. That's the y is equal to x line. Can you see that? So the graph where the inverse and the function meets will also be the points of intersection of the two. Okay? But more of this when we get it. Okay, don't, don't worry about this. This is the easiest work, that's why we leave it for, for term two. Okay. The difficult part is gone. Right? 
Yes, geometry and trigonometry. That's the, that's the tough sections. After this, it's an easier ride. Okay. But also, why do I do it first? Is so that we can be tested out the hour. Okay, so that you can get the best mark you can in that section at the end of the year. That's the idea. Okay. That's how it unfolded so far. Okay. Don't now be different. Okay. At least do better. People, um, I just sketched the graph of uh, 4.2 on uh, that system of axis. <coughs> this one, 4.5. It says restrict the domain of f of x in one way so that the inverse can be a, is a function. So currently, the, the rule says if a line, if a function cuts the vertical line. Now, vertical line is a line that's standing perpendicular to the x or parallel to your y axis. No, not so? So, that's your y and that's your x. No? If you've got your, your vertical line cutting the graph twice, then it's not a function. Okay? So if you look at the red graph, the G of X graph, is it cutting once at any given point on this graph? 